Well, I think the last couple of days, we, look, all, all years, since the middle of the year, I said we're going to look at all operations at the end of the season. That's what we've done every year for as long as I've been around. And, uh, you know, Rats, Rats have spoken to a few people. I know he wanted to know where he was at. And on yesterday afternoon, we got together and we got to it. So that, that's how it panned out. And we, you know, in respect to what Brett Ratton's done for this football club, I think it's a fair call. We had to let him know. And some people say we should have done it Monday. But, you know, no knee-jerk no reactions. We were pretty flat on Monday and we had to do a few things and do some uh, speaking and talking. We got to uh, spoke to him yesterday. It was ongoing, Rob. I mean, it's, it's been ongoing all year since the middle of the season. And, you know, it's, it's a tough call. It's a harsh call. It's an each-way call. Um, the injury list we've had this year was taken fully into account. And, uh, you know, we missed finals. And this football club... Um, you know, standards are high and, you know, we don't apologise for that. We, we, we're prepared to take criticism on the decision because it is a harsh call on Brett Ratt and I, I'll, I'll stand by that. Tony, to tell you the truth, seriously, I hadn't factored in. We'd offer a 96-point win against Eston, which was, you know, we are actually climbing back. We're getting some respect back and, you know, anything can happen in footy. You really, we were waiting for the end of the season. What if we'd made finals and we win two? You know, that, that could have happened. We're getting players back and... Uh, to tell you the truth, and into your question, it hadn't, hadn't really factored in my mind that we lose the, lose the Gold Coast Suns with no disrespect. We didn't, and uh, the call came sooner rather than, you know, well, sooner rather than later. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be speaking to people like Mick Malthouse. We're looking for a respected senior coach that hopefully coaches the Premiership, and he'll certainly be in the mix. We'll, we'll get on to that now. What, what I'd like to do, Caroline, is get over St Kilda on the weekend, but I think now that's out in the open, we need to move and get going. And is Mick Malthouse your preferred candidate? He's one of them. No, not at this stage. What what we said uh, throughout the whole process was we would let we'd let the uh, rats run you know run his course, which we have, and at no stage because and it's been probably uh, somebody touched on it before. It's like it's probably been a you know the grim reaper over our shoulder for a long time. Every time anything happens here, you know, because I've had a relationship that gets brought up, and for that very reason, you know, I haven't spoken and we haven't spoken and you know and we've left it on the side and obviously. Once the decision's been made, um, now, as uh, Stick said, we'll get through this weekend and, uh, you know, next week or at some stage next week, we'll, we will make contact and we'll see, uh, see where that sits. Um, yeah, I would. I mean, I have, you know, I know him well. I don't, uh, I, uh, I have, yeah, we had a great relationship and, you know, it was a long time ago now. That was about uh, six or seven years ago. But, you know, we've remained uh, in touch and we're pretty good mates. So, yeah, if he's... Um, if he's uh, available, he'd be, he'd be good, yeah. Certainly take responsibility. I'm president at the moment, Caroline, so the buck stops for me. But uh, going back, especially with well, Wayne Britton had a year to go. I mean, you'd have to ask uh, John Elliott and Wes Loss about that. I don't think they were um, telling many people what was going on at that time. And certainly with Dennis Pagan, um, you know, lost by 20 goals to Brisbane and that sort of uh, cost him his job. And uh, Dick Pratt, we weren't going to stop Dick Pratt from making the call on that one and put Brett Bratton in. Uh, for the rest of the year, but, but I, I, look, I stand here accountable for those sorts of things, and, and footy's a funny game, but things can change quickly. Brett Ratton was the man for the job two years ago, and I stand by that and support him all the way through that. He earned his job. We had the blowtorch on him like no one else has had it last year, and he won a final, and then he nearly pulled off the miracle of winning the second final against West Coast to get us into prelim. It was an um, outstanding achievement, so I'll stand by that, but again, our standards have been set high, mate, no apology for that, and you know, if that, that comes back on me, I'll, I'll absolutely totally accept that. Um, and I've been involved in all those decisions. But again, we serve our footy club on boards and footy directors. Presidents make calls. And I've been president for the last... I mean, you know, I've, um, we've re-signed Rats twice in my time as president in the last three and a bit years. So it's a close call, Rob. As I said before, it's a very harsh call on this. Um, Brett Ratton, either way, all year could have kept going on this job. And that's why I suppose we've waited so long and wanted to wait at the end of the year, because we were still in the game. Mick Mouldhouse available? Well, he said he is. We'll find out. I don't know. So what I was saying, David, during the year, we, we lost to Port Adelaide in the middle of the season. Uh, you know, since the middle of the season, since the break, we've been looking at how we're going. We've had some ordinary performances, we've had some really good performances. So I appreciate the criticism on our board and myself. I actually, again, I say I totally accept all of that. But footy changes. It's such a moving, changing beast. If you had said... Rats comes out first year, puts his nuts on the line, saying we're going to finish top four. It's a brave call. But you can't factor in that you lose 15 blokes during the season. We've had some performances along the way. We didn't make the finals. OK, things changed quickly. That's what happened.
as I said, I've not spoken to Mick Mulhouse or his manager. I've been backing our bloke in right to this minute yesterday afternoon. So we'll get to that after Boy, Sunday's yes. game. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, um, uh, yeah, Jake had a story this morning that people were asked to take pay cuts and things, but uh, that actually hasn't happened. We did have a discussion. We've got, obviously list management. We've had a discussion about Travis, but yeah, look, we, we expect he'll stay at Collingwood. I mean, um, Ed got in a bit of a flap yesterday, but you know that's okay. I think you know he's a Collingwood player, so until he's not a Collingwood player, we're all just sort of sitting in the in the in the wings and. For us to get Travis, we'd have to make some adjustments, and I'm not sure we'll do that. But look, have that's that's. Have you got room in the salary? We, we'd have to do some things to make room. Yeah. No, we, uh, the assistant coaches, all of our assistant coaches have actually got a year to run. So, um, you know, we, we and they're they're all in our view of very high caliber. So whoever the person is that comes in, they'll make a decision on on uh, whether there'll be any changes. But I would expect there'd be minimal changes because, as I said, our people are. They're high calibre, they're contracted, and um, you know there might be a tweaking here and there, but there won't be you know mass everybody out and a whole new crew in that that won't happen. Robo, you're always under pressure in this job. <laughs> to be honest, you are. So, you know the boards make a decision on coach and the CEO, and um, the same thing may well happen to me. That might that might be the case. So, um, but look, all you can do is uh, do your best at the time, and you know do what you think is right at the time. And so, look, if somebody has a challenge or you know the board decide that there's a better CEO which is you know is there is their uh, is their uh, ability to do so well then so be it but you know you always in, in a big club you're always under under the uh, in under scrutiny and under spotlight so um, that's how it is I've been in the I've been on the board for a while now and it's a lot of people in this room say too long and that's fine but uh, at, at, at the end of the day um, I'm put in by the members um, the board announced every year who the president is they vote on that um, I put myself up at the end of the year. I go and about October say, boys, what do you want? To, and, and ladies, what do you want me to do? I'm happy to stay on if you want me to do. But if you want to move someone in, please, please do it. I won't, will not be dragged kicking and screaming at this football club. I love it too much. I respect it too much. And to tell you the truth, without I'm not going to, you know, stick up for our football club and our board. But we, a lot of people said we've been divided, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I, I can't imagine in my time at the footy club how closely the board have worked together. And I, I seriously mean that, not just because I'm in charge at, at this stage, but. Uh, it's been a good exercise and everyone's been on the same page throughout. And as you say, you need to be on the same page when you make a tough call on a Carlton great like Brett Ratton. And I, I should say, and I want to say this, um, the way he handled himself has just been unbelievable. This morning, the way he spoke to the players, outstanding. I, I feel like we've got blood on our hands still, Tony. Don't worry about that. I really do. I mean, look, even yesterday, Tony, when, you know, the, it probably started after the game on Saturday night, the... Uh, the Coaches, you know, the whole group and myself and Sticks just sort of sat in the uh, hotel lobby and, you know, had a few beers and sort of, uh, you know, reflected on the game and, and then Rats came in on Monday and, uh, you know, he was still upbeat as he always was and then yesterday we had the conversation and, and all, the, all the time he's been, uh, you know, and you, you witnessed it even today, I mean, that's almost a shadow of what he's been like around the place. He's just been, you know, what's best for the club, What's best for um, you know uh, what what's best for him has come almost a secondary thing. It's been absolutely incredible how positive he is. And this morning with the coaches, he um, you know he didn't get uh, emotional about it. He just said you know a bit like he said here, it's a fact of life. You know don't you know don't feel sorry for me. Don't you know don't have your chin on the ground. You know the best thing you can do is actually perform on. Uh, Sunday and play and he was adamant that he wanted to coach and we were we were really pleased that he did that and um, he has he's been uh, He's acted through the you know the whole thing for you know with dignity and resilience and you know um, And always at the forefront has been what's best for the club and it's an, an absolute credit to him He's been sensational. Well, I think you know rats touched on it before himself I think it was just you know the performances on the field, you know this time last week We were going to the Gold Coast thinking if we win we can still make finals and you know things will happen there but that's probably just been a bit of a reflection. It's been a bit up and down the season. We've had, uh, obviously, we had injuries, but even, you know, I think in those last two weeks, the you know the 96 point win followed by a loss, you know, with so much at stake, you know, we literally had finals on the agenda. I think, you know, uh, that was, you know, almost indicative of the year that we had. That we were just a little bit, uh, certainly off the pace when we were playing the uh, the big teams too. So, oh well, from um, operation, well, the board. Um, there, you know, there is. We've said all the way along, and that there is a review, and there is a review. There is a review 
well, Sticks can talk about that, but, you know, people on the board and who's, uh, there's, there's some changes mooted at the end of this year and there may well be uh, discussions about, you know, um, that as it goes. And certainly from, we're looking at everything from myself to, uh, you know, the fitness, the doctors, the recruiting, the, um, you know, everything in relation to the football uh, area is being, you know, and is being reviewed and be reviewed strongly. Yeah, every, well, look, that happens as a matter of, as a matter of course, but it's, um, you know, we finished a, st a strategic plan last year where, you know, within that is some rigorous uh, benchmarks and rigorous reviews. And so it's really off the back of that that, um, that, that that's being undertaken. And obviously the coaching was part of that as well. So. And the board, Carolyn, the, the board, we've got three retiring uh, board members this year. And uh, I, I really, the board will change significantly over the next few years, the football club. That's what, if, if that's a question you're asking. And, uh, you know, people like myself, I've got a year or two tops to go if I if I keep going after this year whatever happens will happen um, and that's reviewed constantly we're trying to get good people on our board all the time well I, I think this club's been impatient for 148 years I've got no doubt about that it was when I got here um, in 85 end of 85 and it is today I'll say that on my, I'll say I'll speak on that um, all you got in this game is your loyalty your honesty and integrity we've not it's big to me we will not be approaching anybody before the end of the football season absolute fact I've spoken to Rats. I mean, guys, this has been... Um, as long as though Rats and I don't speak, I see him every day down the football club and what's going on around the place. We haven't spoken about Malthouse. Yeah. Rob, to tell you the truth, I'm not trying to be a martyr here, but my thoughts for Rats and his wife and his family at the moment, they're doing it tough and uh, I'm not worried about me. We'll, uh, we'll battle on this footy club and uh, we've, got a big th we've got a big few weeks to get organised what started today or started yesterday and uh, we'll do that job and then reevaluate September, October, November. Jake, we've got a footy subcommittee who makes recommendations to the board and they're ongoing. As I said earlier, the last half of the season, we're looking at all sorts of facets in football and we report every board meeting, the footy subcommittee to the poll board. So everyone's up to speed on how we go. I'm flat on the players on the weekend. I'm really flat on the players on the weekend. They understand that too. I was disappointed in our performance. They were wearing the Carlton jumper on Saturday night. The big game, we were let down. Look, I'm not blaming our players. I love our players, you know, but... You know, I was a player myself, so you, you, you wear the jump and you need to perform at certain times, and they didn't, so... But we'll move on. We've got a good bunch of players here at this football club. Don't worry about that. They're a good valley, good kids, and they'll get better. <laughs> oh, well, we'd hope, Johnny. Jeez, I hope so. But, uh, look, there's no guarantees in this game. I don't care if Ruse comes in, Moldos comes in, or whoever you like. There's no guarantee. We could fall on our face straight away. And you guys would judge us if I'm still around. Personally, you'd judge us on that. And this decision, whatever happens today and whoever we hire over the next few weeks or a month, you guys will make the call on that, whether we've done the right thing or not. And, and it's a win-loss business. Let's make no error. That's what it's about, win-loss. Apparently, we've, we've been following Brendan Goddard for the last 10 years, haven't we? Yeah, I, I know. know uh, it's not enough for Damien, I don't think we're going to get him. Damien <laughs> said last week on the footy show that we were one suitors, but we haven't spoken to his manager. We haven't, to be perfectly honest, in list management either. It'd be very, very, very unlikely that we would pursue uh, Brendan Goddard. Actually, we won't pursue Brendan Goddard. Well, I've read that and heard that. Not that I know of, and I don't think Greg does no, either. And no. um, um, look, <coughs> the process for that as well is that every uh, year we, you know, obviously Chris is the captain and has been since he's got here, and that gets re uh, reaffirmed every February just before the pre-season starts. So, um, yeah, I think again it started on the rumour file that he was out and Murphy was in. Well, you know, again you sort of say, well, that's news to us, but we'll go through the same process. Um, you know, in February we'll announce who's the captain and vice captain, but at this stage, he's the captain and he'll remain the captain. And you know, so um, he's led the place brilliantly over the last five years. And um, you know, unless something uh, drastic happens, then you know he'll keep going. So it's an interesting one. I mean, I heard somebody <coughs> speculating on the radio that it was going to cost us three million dollars to do the changeover. Well, we couldn't do that. You know, we would be broke. But it's not going to, as I said before, our assistant coaches are locked away and we don't expect, you know, if some move on, it, it'll be minimal. Um, and the club's in a, you know, we, we, we'll make, uh, from a cash position, we're, we're going strongly. We've reduced our debt and we'll knock another $750,000 off it this year. We knocked 750000 off it last year. So, you know, the debt's coming down. We've got some, uh, with the new gaming legislation, some, you know, the uh, gaming revenues... Uh, going well as well so from that point of view where we still think that we'll have our debt uh, cleared in the next two or three years and you know and, and this payment um, 
is will be accommodated you know reasonably yeah we don't, we don't need outside assistance look and look they're, they're minor things but you know we've spoken with his management group about that before you know before we sort of did much else the, the things that happened yesterday was that you know we're just reassuring he, he again like he didn't even ask to be honest he just i sort of had to tell him at the end just so you know he goes yeah yeah that'll, you know, that'll be fine um and whether he wanted to coach the last game and he was adamant we di he did and we were delighted because we just think it's a great opportunity for the Carlton supporters to um, you know, give him the appropriate send off because he deserves it. He's he's um, he's taken us uh, from you know literally the bottom of the ladder to being respect you know, back being a respectable team. So ideally sooner rather than later. I mean, you know, in the next fortnight, you know, you'd you'd want to know, I think so. I mean, look, having said that, all those trade things, Robbo, they don't start till after the finals. So there's still a month, obviously, yeah. to go for that. So, you know, we, you, but, you know, we've still got to run the business and, uh, you know, there's players finishing or, you know, players getting operations and all that sort of stuff. So, we, you know, that's got to keep going. But obviously, uh, you know, you can't make all your decisions until you know who's in place. So. No, I just think our list is out of time where we need to, you know, Chris Judd, I don't know how long Juddie can play on for. I just think we need to strike. If we're going to strike, it needs to be in the next couple of years so I think we just need a bloke who's been around the park not, not a rookie coach I'd say that that's all I'd say that's what we're looking for I don't if, if I'm here I don't believe in shared captaincies but uh, I think Judd should just captain he's an outstanding leader and uh, Murph's Murph was captain this year for three for four and he might have got ahead of himself <laughs> but uh, you know I think Juddy mm -hmm. we'll, uh, we'll talk Juddy into that if there's any problems I'm sure <laughs> sort of back to the game on the weekend and oh, Rats was going to say but you know we're playing Luke Mitchell for his first game on the weekend and um, you know Luke he came to the club as a key forward he's a, he's a big power forward he, um, he's had a lot of problems with shoulders he's probably first time since he's been here that uh, he's able to string some games together so hopefully um, our supporters and members can see uh, see Luke as you know as another new guy. Um, unfortunately, Levi Casbolt's uh, injured after last week. But you know, two young kids that are big power power forwards, and that's what we recruited them for. But look, an experienced guy. Um, they don't grow on trees. There's not many of them. But uh, so hopefully, you know, we'll, hopefully these guys can stand up and and we can uh, grow our own, which would be even which would be better. So.